Hi, and congrats on being among the first musicians around the world to explore Osmos. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the different menus and features of your new instrument to make your start with it as smooth as possible. Before getting started, you want to make sure that you've already installed the latest firmware on your Osmos. You'll find the download link inside your Expressive E account after registering your instrument. Let's start our tour with understanding the keypad. Osmosis Augmented Keyboard Action continuously detects three axis motions for every key separately. The first vertical dimension is called Key Pressure, letting you trigger notes already with the slightest push and following your movement continuously in real time. Once you arrive at maximum pressure, you will feel a distinct pressure point. From there on, the second vertical dimension called Aftertouch begins. It offers several millimeters of additional key travel and is used to further emphasize or modulate your timbre. Shifting the key lever sideways is called note bending. It is commonly used to play pitch bends and intuitive vibrato. Remember, all of this works on a per note basis. So let's dive into the main control interface. The M button in the upper left corner is the Mode button. It lets you choose between accessing the internal Egan Matrix sound engine or using Osmos as an advanced controller for external gear. Select your mode by turning and pushing one of the left encoders. Let's concentrate on the internal sound engine first. The four buttons above the display are the menu buttons. When controlling the internal sound engine, the four menus are presets, which gives access to all the Egan Matrix presets saved on the device, Synth, which enables you to tweak the currently loaded preset, Sensitivity, allowing you to adapt the response of Osmosis Keybed, and Playing, which comprises Osmosis Advanced Portamento feature as well as its appetitor. Here's how to load a preset. Go to the Presets menu by pushing the first menu button. There are three tabs inside that menu. Scrolling through tabs is always done by turning the encoder at the top left of the screen, called the Tab Selector. We'll stay in the Factory tab. The currently loaded preset is highlighted in green. Turn the rightmost value encoder to select another preset. You'll need to push the encoder to actually load it. You can also step through the current preset list with the preset buttons below. There are more than 500 factory sounds coming with Osmos, so it makes sense to filter down the preset list. For this, use the first two value encoders. Turn the first to choose a specific type of sound, like bass, pads, leads or mallets. Push or simply let go for a moment to make your selection. Use the second encoder to filter down the list based on a sound's character, like acoustic, clean, dark or electric. To tweak a sound, go to the synth menu. The first tab in the Synth menu gives access to the sound macros. They allow for subtle to drastic changes to your sound and will do entirely different things from preset to preset. It really depends on the sound designer's choices. Turn the encoder below a macro to tweak it to your liking. Often, one of the macros is also mapped to the modulation slider for easy access. Whenever there are more than four parameters to access, a bar of bullet points at the bottom of the screen indicates that you can scroll using the lower encode on the left, called the Parameter Selector. Next to the Macros tab, you'll find the Global Effects tab. This controls the time-based effect that is applied to the sound as a whole. You can choose between a reverb, a delay and four types of echoes. Each algorithm can then be fine-tuned with six parameters. And please be cautious with the analog style echo, it can get very loud when you're cranking up its feedback parameter. Next up is the Equalizer tab that contains a basic shelving EQ. You set a pivot frequency and then tilt the curve to balance out frequencies above and below. It's a parallel equalizer, which means you can mix in the processed signal with the unprocessed one by increasing the mix percentage on the right. The Egan Matrix is an extremely dynamic sound engine, so we've programmed a compressor in all its factory sounds to keep levels more consistent. It is a one-knob compressor whose threshold, ratio and attack are defined by the compressor amount, but of course its behavior also depends on how much signal you feed into it with a pre-gain. Similar to the EQ, there's a compressor mix that allows mixing the wet and dry signal. 
Changes to the macros, the effects or the EQ may lead to an overall volume change. You can compensate for this with a pre-gain and the post-gain. Be aware that high pre-gain values will lead to internal distortion. The voice tap features only one parameter, the pitch bend range of the pitch slider. Contrary to note bending on the keys, the slider will affect all played notes as a whole, just like your regular pitch wheel or touch strip would do. Lastly, the mod pedal tab lets you choose the parameters that you want to control from the modulation slider and the two pedal inputs. Pedal 2 and the mod slider will always control the same parameter. Make sure to calibrate your pedals via the global settings before using them. Possible modulation targets are different types of sustain, the synth macros, the effects parameters and the post gain. If you map your pedal to the post gain, then it will act like a classic volume pedal. If you wish to save the modifications you have made to sound, you will need to head to the Presets menu again. Scroll to the Save tab. Use the leftmost value encoder to click on Location. Then turn it to select the slot to save to and validate by pressing the rightmost encoder. There are 128 slots dedicated to user presets. Factory presets cannot be overwritten. To give your user preset a specific name, turn the first encoder to select the name line and press to enter the renaming process. You can then scroll through characters by turning the encoder. Turn the second encoder to move the cursor. Once you're done, validate by pressing the fourth encoder. The saving options let you decide whether or not you wish to save the current sensitivity menu settings and or the playing menu settings with that preset. We'll get to the logic behind that later. For the moment, press the rightmost value encoder. It will save your current sound into the selected user location under the name you've just entered. To recall your save preset, go to the user tab of the presets menu. And this is perfect to keep your favorites or to prepare for a gig. The third menu is the sensitivity menu. It allows adapting the new keybed interactions offered by Osmos to your playing style. The bending tab lets you change how the lateral bending of a key will affect the pitch. The first parameter is the range that defines how far the pitch will be modulated at maximum deflection. Given the limited sideways key travel, you'll probably want to go with one or two semitones most of the time, but wider ranges can also make for interesting results. The goal of the three following parameters is to make Osmos react to vibrato or band gestures in a natural way, while at the same time helping you to stay in tune when no bending is intended. This is achieved in two ways. First, there is the bending curve. It will establish a kind of dead zone around the middle of the key in order to avoid unwanted bends. However, playing vibrato with only subtle gestures will become increasingly difficult the bigger that dead zone is. Then, there's a stabilization algorithm that will intelligently smooth out uneven motions that tend to happen especially during the first few moments of your keystroke. To quickly step through useful settings for both curve and stabilization at once, there are five sensitivity sub-presets that go from low, medium, regular to sensitive and high. Lastly, there's a fifth parameter called activation, which allows you to enable bending only for specific notes. For instance, it might come in handy to only activate bending for the highest note when playing chords with the left hand and soloing with the right. The pressure tab concerns the first vertical dimension of the keys. It lets you define at which point an actual note is triggered which is called the note on threshold, and then lets you adjust the response of the pressure dimension with a curve. Similar to the quick settings of the bending tab, the first parameter of the pressure tab also offers some sub-presets that adjust the note on threshold and the curve of the pressure at once. If you find yourself triggering notes unintentionally, then you may want to increase the note on threshold value, which will increase the amount of downward key travel needed to trigger a note. This will bring you towards a more classic keyboard feel, where notes are only triggered when you push a key right down to the bottom. On the other hand, if you're eager to experiment with triggering notes using only light taps on a key surface, then an extreme setting for the pressure dimension will allow you to do exactly that. The aftertouch begins where the pressure dimension is at the maximum. Another curve allows you to adjust its response. The more notes you play at once, the harder it will become to really push fully into the key's aftertouch without bending notes unintentionally. This would be an example of a situation where you would perhaps prefer to have a sensitive aftertouch that doesn't require lots of force to activate. 
The last tab of the sensitivity menu allows you to save your current settings as the default sensitivity that will then be used across all factory sounds. Factory sounds don't have a specific sensitivity saved with them, so upon preset change, you will always fall back to the default setting saved at the time. Defining your default sensitivity will help you feel at home with the instrument. While you are growing your level of comfort with Osmos, you may want to update that setting from time to time. That being said, different playing situations also call for different sensitivity settings. A setting that allows for beautiful articulations when playing a solo flute can become hardly manageable when playing wide pad chords with both hands. This is why you can decide to save the current sensitivity setting with a user preset. Just activate Save Sensitivity in the Saving Options and it will later be recalled when dialing up that user preset. If you don't want to override the default sensitivity but still want to keep the current setting across preset changes, then you can also use the Sensitivity's Freeze function. There's a snowflake symbol next to the tab selector. If you push the tab selector, it will become purple and the current sensitivity remains active across preset changes, even when dialing up a user preset that has a custom sensitivity saved with it. Push again to unfreeze. Moving on to the fourth menu, the playing menu. It offers useful MIDI effects that let Osmos interpret the notes that you play in an intelligent way. Let's start with Harken Audio's Pressure Weighted Portamento, or Pressure Glide for short. It's not only great for monophonic sounds like leads or basses, but also works wonders for some plucked or guitar-like tones where a little slide here and there makes all the difference. Turn the first value in code in the playing menu to select Press Glide. Whenever Pressure Glide is activated, you will be warned about it with a symbol that remains visible also when browsing in the presets menu. Back in the playing menu, the second tab lets you define a pitch interval in which two simultaneous key presses are interpreted as a legato line instead of polyphonic playing. Let's enable Pressure Glide across the whole keybed just to listen to its effect. Unlike regular portamento, which makes the pitch glide to a new note within a fixed amount of portamento time, Pressure Glide reacts to the pressure ratio between the two notes. The pitch will dynamically glide between the notes in real time reacting to how you distribute pressure between them. As mentioned, the portamento will only be active within the interval defined in the Pressure Glide tab. Let's say the interval is set to two semitones. It will sound great for gliding between adjacent notes while still being able to play polyphonically. However, as soon as you're playing a chord with a second in it, two notes will be joined into one, possibly conflicting with what you expect to hear, so when pressure glide is active, Always bear in mind the chosen interval in order to avoid surprises during your performance. Pressure Glide can be quickly switched on and off by pressing the parameter selector in the playing menu. A freeze function is also available in the playing menu. Press the tab selector if you wish to keep the same Pressure Glide setting across preset changes. The second feature of the playing menu is our advanced MPE arpeggiator. In the Choose tab, Use the first value encoder to load up the arpeggiator. The rightmost encoder then allows you to choose an arpeggiator preset. Changes will take immediate effect when scrolling through the list. The Adjust tab contains all the arpeggiator parameters. Hold will make sure that the notes you pressed will continue to be triggered even when you let go of the keys. It will remember the maximum pressure applied to each key. The note repertoire will only be reset when you've already released all keys and then press a new key. Tempo defines the beats per minute. Pressing the encoder below will switch between syncing to an external MIDI clock and using the internal clock. Pattern lets you choose in which order the notes are played back. Division defines the note value of one arpeggiator step. Gate time defines the note length. Octave range lets you add multiple octaves above the notes played. Swing allows shifting every second arpeggiator step in time. 100 equals an even playback of all steps. Values above 100 will introduce more and more swing until eventually every second step is joined with the next step. Ratchet will introduce multiple triggers during one arpeggiator step and Rise and Fall will add some inertia to parameter changes, smoothing out fast increases or decreases in value. The most interesting aspect of Arpeggiator is that those parameters can not only be changed on a global basis for all notes, 
but also the way you press individual notes on the keypad can modulate a parameter for that specific note. It means that you can highlight single notes within your arpeggiator sequence just by pressing them differently from the others. The Assign tab lets you set up the parameter mapping for this. There are two assign slots, each with a source and a destination, as well as min-max values and a response curve. An effective example would be to assign the pressure on a key to the gate parameter. It will make a note sound longer the deeper you press it down. You could also add octaves above when pressing a note into the aftertouch, or introduce ratcheting only for notes that you bend to the right. There are lots of possibilities we invite you to explore. A few examples are shown in the arpeggiator presets. The arpeggiator playback can be quickly started or paused by pressing the parameter selector in the playing menu. Press the tab selector to freeze the arpeggiator if you wish to keep its current settings, but experiment with the effect it would have on a different sound. And if you find that the arpeggiator should be an integral part of the current sound, then don't hesitate to include it while saving this sound as a user preset. Just set the Save Playing option to Yes, and the ARP will be recalled when opening that user preset again. You can also save just the arpeggiator preset on its own. Use the Save tab of the Playing menu for this. Your ARP preset will then show up in the Choose tab just below the factory ARP presets. That's it for this quick tour. More episodes will be added during the upcoming weeks while the Osmos community continues to grow steadily. In the meantime, you may want to check out the Quick Start Guide and our online manual. Also, feel free to reach out to us and share your feedback by creating a support ticket on our help pages. Thank you kindly for your support on behalf of the whole Expressive e-team. Happy exploring!